Hi, and welcome back to uh, it's Mr. Rotter's Neighborhood. Um, it's another beautiful Buick day in the neighborhood. Uh, today we're going to be working on one of the biggest Achilles heels for the Buick V8 and V6, um, which is the timing cover. Uh, it's, it's actually oiling improvement, so uh, hopefully uh, you Buick fans out there find some enlightenment. Um, it would apply also to AMC V8s, which have the same similar timing cover, um, where your oil pump is contained within the timing cover itself, the aluminum housing of the timing cover. Now, uh, what we've got going on is we're going to open up a few passages. Um, this is all in relation to, uh, if you're familiar with any of, uh, physics and stuff like that, there's a, a law called Boyle's Law that's, uh, it says that pressure is directly inverse uh, proportion to volume, right? So on your Buick V8, the old school of train of thought used to be jack the oil pressure to the moon and give yourself 100 pounds of oil pressure. And when you gave yourself a higher, you know, uh, pressure, it gave you more volume. Um, but I found uh, screwing around with these things that you don't necessarily need that high pressure because you can modify the timing cover uh, to flow a higher volume of oil. Uh, the factory actually identified this as a, as a weakness uh, years ago and started producing timing covers with larger passages in them uh, to increase volume and, and you know you didn't have to have that super high pressure any longer. But um, we'll go ahead and, and kick this off. I'll, uh, I'll flip the camera around and, and show you what I'm talking about. So here we are on our fab table, and we're gonna go ahead and get everything set up. And I'm gonna open up some of those passages to what I like to use, um, which is your 5 8 suction side, and then we're gonna go to a, a 9 16 uh, feed side, which is just slightly larger than what it already is. But then we're going to uh, radius the turns and port and polish the interior of the, the oil passage itself. So it'll be slightly bigger than 9 16 but it still leaves plenty of, of material all around the feed side to uh, seal up the gasket well. Now, hopefully uh, we're all in frame and, uh, and you all can see this and I try not to move it too much out of frame, um, but we're gonna go ahead and start with our modifications. And the easiest thing I like to do is find out what size the oil feed hole is. Uh, in this case, it's a little bit larger than 7 16 like I said, I think it's 15, 30 seconds. So I have a 31 64 drill bit here that is just slightly larger. Uh, it does bind up in there. So we're gonna open it up and I go, it just says 64th at a time. Um, the reason for that is if you try to cut too much out of it, you can crack this timing cover. So I'll just take it down and it'll eventually get to a point where it binds and uh, All right, so now that we are bottomed out uh, with the 3164 and then move on to the half inch. Okay, and like I said, we're going to try to take this out to 9 16 which is um, just slightly bigger than what it really was to begin with. I'm gonna take a half inch. And we're gonna just try to work it around a little bit. And see if we can open it up some more without trying to take a full 16th at one time. Same thing's gonna to have to happen with our with our uh, oil feed line down here in the oil passage. So we are gonna have to open that up. You're looking at four inches. Now I've I've drilled the blocks, 14 inches. And, and what's neat about this is, generally when you already have a pilot hole, it'll kind of want to go, it'll center on the hole itself. 
Let's just go slow. Five minutes later. Get the vacuum here. We'll start binding up when you get down to the uh, the area it's been machined already. It's it's already been drilled from this angle, so what it does is it causes it to bind up. So you just got to go slow without going overboard. Remember, it's easy to to crack the timing cover. All right, so now we're at the bottom. The easy thing to do: suck all that crap out. As you can see, we got a, we now have a 9 16 hole with quite a bit of sealing surface area around it. Now we will have to bevel this hole so that there is no sharp edges sticking up and keep it from sealing on the motor. But uh, you're lucky because if, if you didn't have this later, if I didn't have this later timing cover, I guess I'm lucky. Um, it, I would have to drill all these holes and then radius and chamfer all the turns. But um, and we're gonna move on to this three inch hole. So we start again with, uh, oh, what is this one? Uh, 29 64ths, cause this thing is just barely bigger than the 29 64ths. We're gonna have to take them out a 64th at a time. Now it's gonna take a little while. This one is generally a little easier than the other. And what you're looking for is you want to look down through this hole to verify you stop at the correct point. All right, it's starting to get a little bound. So it looks like from the factory, this hole might have been chamfered for a larger diameter, but it's not um, a larger diameter all the way up to the feed hole. So I am going to get some lube, put some lube in there, some WD. All right, this should be Okay, it always gets worse before it gets better. So now we're through. You can see the drill bit is, uh, is actually broken through. So our hole now is now, what did I say, 29 64ths. So we need to go up 1 64th to uh, 15 30 seconds. If you are a big fan, you better own quite a bit of drill bits because this is how you do it. All right. So here is 15, 30 seconds. And we're gonna have to go slow. Five minutes later. Okay, I need the vacuum cleaner. Okay, so that was 15, 30 seconds. Now we're gonna go up to 31, 64. Now that's, 31 64ths, and a half inch. Now well, that's a lot of metal shavings. All right, so now we're gonna go up to the big bad boy. Um, before I do that, I am gonna do, uh, like I said, it, it's this is trying to take a 16th of an inch is a, is a lot at one time. But as you can see, the oil feed hole is getting considerably larger. Okay, now I have had them where they're ginormous when I get done and you get them to almost three quarters of an inch. But there's a very little ceiling surface and that's for something that, I mean, literally that you want it to flow oil. And I, I normally do that like on the big blocks 
um, because the mains in the big block are three and a half inch. They're not three inch like the ones on this 350 or if you go down to the 300 or two and a half inch. So the smaller the main bearing, the smaller the surface, the less oil that it needs, the, also the slower the speed that the bearing, that the crank turns on the bearing, right? Because the larger diameter, is just like if you're riding a 10 speed bike, essentially, I guess, do I have that right? Yeah, you're riding a 10 speed bike, the big tall tires on the 10 speed bike, if you look down at them, they're really, the surface is really flying. But if you look down at the spindle, it's barely rotating. The same thing happens on these engines when you decrease the size of the main bearing. Um, it, ha it turns at a slower speed. It's what they call bearing speed. I'm gonna have to try to go right to the 916. So we'll see how well that works. I'm sure it'll be fine. Just gotta go slow. Five minutes later. Alright, so we're through. So you can see that we got a 916 hole in here. Uh, we don't appear to be cracked, and which is good. I was surprised. Uh, <laughs> it was getting really tough there towards the end. But we're completely through. We got a 916 hole on the uh, feed side coming from the pump uh, to the block. So now it's time to just clean it up and chamfer turns and, and radiuses and, and uh, then we'll uh we'll have something that flows considerably better than the factory piece now remember if you don't open up the block uh after you do this the hole in the block is still going to be 7 16 so five minutes later we'll come from this side and we're going to try to we try to knock that edge off if possible. That probably is better with the other bit. So we got another sandpaper roll that's shaped like a like a triangle, right? So it's beveled, so you can actually get it at a sharper angle. What I do now is take out that 90 degree turn. But if it's 85 degree turn, it's better than than a 90. So. Uh, we're just gonna shape it at an angle. Okay, so you can see there, I don't know how well you can see it. Let me look through the camera. But you can see that this hole here, 90 degrees, and when I open it up, uh, I take the edge off, so it's no longer 90, it's like a, probably like an 85 degree angle or an 80 degree angle, but it just rounds the turn. So if you know anything about like road racing, the, the fastest part of the track is always on the outside of the turn. Um, and that's what you're wanting to do is improve the velocity and speed at the water that the oil can travel inside this passage. Five minutes later. All right, so if I go any further, a hole, a hole is gonna end up oveling out, but as you can see, it's opened up quite a bit. And that's why I like these uh, these sandpaper rolls and aluminum. They go fairly quick. I don't know how, what kind of angle, there we go. And you can see what kind of, that, that 90 degree turn is no longer 90 degrees, right? So we have something worthwhile. Now we went up, what, five drill bit sizes in this opening. I mean, this hole was originally opened up greater than 7 16 which was, I what did I say, 2964 ths but it was only like maybe three quarters of an inch in there. So this is uh, considerably bigger and it's gonna flow a lot more oil to our engine. You can't really over oil uh, the engine, especially when it has one small feed hole in the front of the block. So um, the more oil that you have going in there, the, the Buicks use, they normally lose a lot of oil around the number one cam bearing. Um, it just hemorrhages oil around a cam bearing. So the more oil you can feed it, the more possibility of oil making it back to uh, the number five main, right? That's the big one, uh, the, the rear main. So, um, uh, because it does feed from the front to the back. Now on this application, when we're done with this, we're gonna have a modified oil line that feeds the back as well as the front so that way, guaranteed, it's getting oil in the back of the motor. And the more oil we can push through here, the greater it's gonna be. Um, I'm playing with some things to, to take some oil away from the pump, so we flow plenty of oil here. We don't have to rely on this one line feeding the whole block. 
we can have a whole secondary line coming off of uh, the pump after the filter and going and feeding the the uh, the rear oil the, the same oil galley but it's from the rear of the engine so all right well that's how you do your basic timing cover mods for uh, Buick uh, I do need to still get down in here and then open this up but I'm gonna do that with uh, my handheld rotary tool um, if you have any questions comments concerns leave them in the bottom uh, hit the like and subscribe button if you think this was cool or you you just want to tell me I'm adult. It doesn't matter. And um, that way you can catch all of our videos and, and uh, troll me to death. All right. Thanks. Have a nice day.